Hi, this is Kyle Newton, and I'm with Wayne Jacobson here in Thousand Oaks. It's March 4th. This is kind of the final Super Bowl round of the movie premieres, and we're excited to be here with the God Journey crowd, some friends, some family, and all of that here for the final quote-unquote premiere, at least in the United States, of The Shack. So, Wayne, how has this been? Has it been a whirlwind tour for you? What do you feel about it? It's been kind of wild on one hand. On the other hand, it's been 11 years in the waiting, so it's finally good to finally have it here finally let some of our friends and family see it who we've been wanting to see it for a long time so it, it's a very rewarding weekend it's it's exhausting we've been running like crazy but it's great it's great to see it with the home crowd we've got people here from 12 different states have wow. flown in just to be with us and with the audience from the god journey which really helped launch the book in the in the early days and we didn't have any other way to get the book out it was that audience that bought into the book and got it out so it's great to have them come celebrate it with us now some of the viewers may not know you or may not know the god journey so tell us a little bit about wayne jacobson and more importantly, what is The God Journey? Yeah, okay. The God Journey is a podcast that Brad Cummings and I have done now for 11 years, 570 some odd episodes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Of he and I just talking about the journey and encouraging other people what it is to live loved by the Father and to live in more relational engagements with brothers and sisters in the body of Christ instead of just going to meetings somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's that kind of encouragement. I, we're both former pastors. I was a pastor for 20 years. And for the last 25, I've been on a different journey, learning to live love, learning to live more relationally. I've written a number of books about all kinds of things. He Loves Me is uh, Learning to Live in the Father's Affection is, I always say, the most significant book I'll ever write because wow. it's, it's really some of the themes that then The Shack came along later and took mm -hmm. some of those she themes into a fiction form. Yes. So, yes. Uh, yeah, I've, I've had a lot of fun encouraging people on this journey. I travel around the world talking to people about what it is to live love. Wow. And what do you think about the book Climbing Back Up in the Charts? Is that something that you had thought about happening again? I mean, you're rising up in the New York, Barnes & Noble's really high, USA Today. It's all happening again, right? Well, it's not me. My name's not on any of that <laughs> stuff, so it's, it's not me. The book is, and, yeah. I, you know, it's, yeah, we knew it would because any movie is a $32 million, this one, commercial right. for the book. So people who haven't read or see the movie and go, oh, I wonder what that's all about, really. I want to read some more detail. So yeah, it's it's the book gets a new play, and you'll see on the bestseller list, it's got movie tie-ins, so people know the reason this is rising again is because there's a movie out, and sure. people are interested in the book. Sure. As you've watched audiences around the United States kind of experience the movie, what's been your greatest aha of their takeaway? What's surprised you the most as they've watched the movie? Is it their laughs? Is it their tears? Is it their revelations? What's, what's kind of struck you that you really didn't anticipate when maybe you were watching the movie up in Canada during its making or whatnot? What's standing out the most for you there? I, I think what I appreciate the most is that people seem really, really engaged. Mm -hmm. So the deep in thought, you know, the, the laugh lines, the things that we think are, are funny, they work. People laugh at the right places, which yes. is always fun to see. But I think it's just how engaged they are, how much eye wiping you see yes. in places where it just the emotions catch up to you. Even I, I know everything coming, and I'm trying not to emote. Yes. I don't know why, but just we do that. And then all of a sudden, I'm just teared up over something going on on the screen again that I've already seen a number of times. So to watch people be that engaged with it and that excited about it and... People that you wouldn't expect, not familiar with the book necessarily, but they're, they're wiping their eyes while the movie's going on. So yeah, it's really rewarding to know that people have gotten involved with the movie. And it's not just kind of looking at it as a curiosity. They're really interacting with the material in their own heart, and that's what we hoped it would do. You know, with the book, we saw a small group of pastors and leaders speak out against the book and kind of go after it, and yet 22 million plus of their parishioners went and saw the movie. Now with the, I'm sorry, read the book. Now with the movie, we see a small number of critics rating it low, but every time you see a fan rating, it's huge ratings. People are loving it. What, where does that happen? Why do we have a few kind of thought leaders kind of tearing it down, but then the mass of the population loving it? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think those are two different groups. For the book, it was people who had theological aversions to something. And I, for the most part, as I've tried to interact with people who have those concerns, I think for the most part, they're reading into the book. What they're saying the book teaches, I don't even believe, and I helped write the book. So yeah. to go, well, you're taking that out of context, like people do with scriptures. People do the same thing with the scriptures. Yes. You can read those things and take them out of context. So that's one crowd. As I've read the negative movie reviews from the Hollywood critics and all, I think they're looking for a different kind of movie. Yeah. And if they're not, if you're not engaged with the content of this movie, I think you kind of look at it going, well, it's pretty and it's colorful, but you know the acting's not very good, and, and you're, you're picking apart pieces of it, which is fine. It's, it's art. Not everybody has to appreciate it. But what I love about the, the people who are seeing it, who are engaged, they're, you can tell by what they've written in their blurbs, they're engaged with the content. So they're not just coming to watch chase scenes and watch a movie and see if it keeps them happy. 
they're engaging mentally with Max Payne, with God dealing with Max Payne, with God making a connection to Max, and you see it happening in their own souls. And if you're involved in the, the thought line of the story, you're not so worried about the movie aspects that, but, and if you're not engaged in that, then I think maybe it, it is hard to follow the movie for some people. And final question, as you're watching the movie yourself, you got to go up to Canada and see it made, and now you see it on the silver screen. What's what's the most impactful part of the movie that maybe you, it, it highlights or even increases what you guys wrote? I know you and Paul and Brad rewrote and rewrote and rewrote this over and over, and now the script got rewrote, rewrote, and rewritten over and over and again. What, what specific scene maybe in the movie just really grabbed you more than any else that you didn't anticipate? Yeah, I'll make one generalization overall, and I'll go to my favorite favorite scene in the movie. One generalization, generalization is you've got to make things simpler when you've only got a two hour movie instead of a nine hour book. Right. And I love the way this has been simplified. It's, it's, it, it was simplified without losing the heart of the content. The best, most important lines made it into the movie. Yeah. So that surprised me. I didn't think that would happen. The scene I love the most, and it doesn't really, I guess how they did it surprised me, is that cave scene, which was the hardest one for us to do. When Sophia, she's not called that in the movie, she calls wisdom in the movie. Uh, when she's confronting Mac, and they're really trying to get to see, Mac, your pain is coming from you. Yes. God's not doing this to you. Yes. It's because you don't know him as good. And so that whole scene when they bring his kids right there in front of him and you must judge them, that is so compelling to me. It just takes your breath away. And then when she says, you've judged them worthy of love, I think for a lot of Christians that grow up with judgment as a bad thing, to be judged by the Father as worthy of love, I mean, you can't beat that. That's just awesome. Yeah. Wayne, congratulations on such a successful book and now a successful movie. I know it was a work of love and a work of passion. You guys have done a great job. Thanks for Thank this. You, Appreciate it.